Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is where I want to start because this is what I felt. As I was preparing this message for you last night, I was anxious and I was discouraged. And I actually called my husband because I felt stuck. Because this was supposed to be a super encouraging talk to send you out into the world to be more effective for the kingdom in this very, very difficult time. And yet, I was not feeling it at all. And so I call him and have a little pity party with him. And I tell him, you know, this is where I am and I don't, I don't know exactly how to lead right now when I feel paralyzed, when I feel discouraged. And he, he brought up this passage and this is really where I want to camp out in our short time together. So 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says this, but we have this treasure in jars of clay, the, the treasure of the gospel, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. And then here's the part that I relate to too well, and I know you will too. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. We are perplexed. <laughs> That's the perfect word for what I was feeling yesterday. We are perplexed. And as a leader, it is my deep desire to lead from a place not of confusion and being perplexed, but a place of confidence. When I can't look forward, when I can't stand on the ship and see where we, it is we're supposed to go, something in me gets very scared, and I feel anxious, and I feel shut down. And so what I'll do is I'll cope. <laughs> and I'm great at coping. I am a professional coper. I love coping. Coping is actually so fun. The way I cope is, you know, sit down. In fact, I'm about two and a half seasons into Down Abbey again. Yes, I have already seen it all, and I'm going back through it. Um, I'm good at shutting out my responsibilities, at pulling away from the important things and the work that I have to do. I'm good at shutting down. And there's nothing wrong with watching Downton Abbey and, and working through whatever our complexities are with, you know, every once in a while with um, a great meal and good friends and TV. It's not that. It's that we are not to be shut down. We are not to cope with the difficulties with something else in this world that cannot satisfy. That's the issue, is that our hope is in our God. Our hope is in the fact that there is, we are carrying in our bodies and these earthly vessels in these tr jars of clay that, that are imperfect, we are carrying the hope of the gospel. We're actually carrying the very thing currently that the world needs most. It always needs this most, but it's actually hungry for it right now. It's actually craving it. It's actually asking deep questions. In fact, in Google searches right now, the number of questions, is God real? Google searches on religion, faith, it is up like 75% right now. Like people are wondering about God and we carry in our bodies, in these earthly vessels, we carry the hope of the world. So we can't shut down. We can't shut down. And we've gotta be realistic about what is and what could be. We can be perplexed, but we're not going to be crushed, right? That's, that's Paul's point is, it's okay that you're perplexed, right? It's okay that we're experiencing afflictions right now, right? That, that's to be expected. In this world, you will have trouble, Jesus said, but take heart, I have overcome the world. It's one of my favorite verses because he's like the superhero, like, hey, it's okay, I overcame the whole world. But the problem is, are we despairing? Because we don't have a storyline that we're a part of where we need to despair, right? We have hope no matter what, no matter how bad our circumstances are. And we actually can be perplexed and wonder at like, what is God doing? Which all of us, I'm sure, are doing. But the despairing is not part of our story and it doesn't have to be part of our narrative. We don't have to shut down, we don't have to cope, we don't have to zone out because we actually know how this ends. And it's good. It's good for those that know Jesus. It's a good ending. And, and that hope which he's gonna go on and talk about in the coming verses, that for we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also is being manifested in our mortal flesh. This is the story of the Christian, is that yeah, life is hard. It was the story of Jesus, right? We, we follow in his footsteps. It was the story of Jesus, like yes, this is broken. Yes, this sucks, sorry, mom, I know you hate that word, but you know, 
stinks. I, it just doesn't feel right. Like, this is hard. It feels worse than that word, y'all. It's hard. But we carry in our bodies the hope of the world. So how are we going to go forward? At the end of this chapter, 2 Corinthians 4, Paul says this, and I love him because he can turn into such a cheerleader. He says, so we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. It feels like right now most of the struggles that we're experiencing are, are inward. For some of you, they're outward. I mean, you're ill. You've got a family member that's ill. You're dealing with unthinkable difficulties circumstantially. But for most of us, and I would say universally, we are struggling inwardly. And what does it look like to struggle well inwardly? It's that we are renewed day by day by something that we can't see, by a hope that we can't quite hold in our hands, but we know to be true. In fact, it's more true than something we could hold in our hands. So we don't lose heart. And even though our outer self is wasting away, and it feels like the days are ticking by, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. I feel like I'm a captain of a ship and I'm standing on it and I don't know where to go. And here's the cool thing. We get to close our eyes and depend on a faithful, unseen God. We don't put our hope in what is seen. I, as a captain of a ship, I don't have to see where to go. I have to ask God where to go. And the way that he's led throughout this book is day by day, step by step. He rarely says, here's the 10-year plan. He rarely says, here's the, you know, your lifetime, you're going to accomplish all these things. He'll sometimes set a little vision out there. He'll, he'll tell a little bit, but he never tells how they're going to get there. How that works is day by day with a cloud, with manna, fire by night, Red Sea parting. He shows them where to go day by day, leading them. And guys, that's the only way through this. Step by step, day by day. It is not a fun answer. But you know what? It is exactly how we were designed to live. If there's one thing the season has exposed, it's how much control we thought we had. Not, not how much control we had. We didn't have more control. We never had it. It's that, oh gosh, I had been leaning on my own understanding. <laughs> I have been walking in my own ways rather than depending on the Spirit of God, rather than trusting Him. That's the cool, awesome thing about this is, is we've been exposed. Like all the things, our crutches, our coping mechanisms, they're, they're all clear to us. We're not confused anymore. We need God, and we do not lose heart because the unseen is more real than the seen, and what is passing away is going to go quickly. It's going to go quickly. And what will last is eternal, forever. So we look to things that are seen, but to, we don't look to things that are seen, but to things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. There is hope. It is unseen. It is coming. It is out there. But it is real. And it is secure. And it is promised. And it will happen. And so our job, one day at a time, one step at a time, not building lives of certainty, but building lives of faith, dependent on God and dependent on each other to carry the hope that has been put in us to a world that needs it more than ever. So don't waste this time.